In 1924, the first real evidence of a human missing link was delivered to a young amateur anthropologist during a wedding. This single fossil was the center of a larger argument between evolutionists and their critics decades before. However, this fossil, which was expected to silence the unconvinced, left more questions than answers. In this short presentation, we will explore how evolution has been viewed by the world, skeptics and believers alike, how the evidence of evolution in humans is nearly insurmountable, and how, if it does, evolution is still acting upon humans. Ever since we started asking ourselves where we fit in our world, humans have always put our lot above that of other animals. It wasn't until biology that we started to seriously question that notion. However, Religion and others in power saw lowering our biological status to that of other common animals as an affront to their beliefs. Carl Linnaeus was one such mind that was punished for even indirectly suggesting humans' humble origins. Linnaeus named humans Homo sapiens, then lumped them together with apes and chimpanzees due to anatomical similarities. He simply wanted to reveal order behind God's creation, not to suggest evolution. Nonetheless, the church crashed down upon him. It wasn't until 136 years later where another mind, Charles Darwin, boldly declared that humans evolved from lesser creatures. In his book, The Descent of Man, Darwin claimed that we at one point were quadrupeds, among other things. Even this man, who was regarded as the authority on the origins of life, was scoffed at by even his closest colleagues and evolutionists. Soon, though, he would be proven correct, but he wouldn't be alive to experience it. Though the idea is not the oldest, less than 150 years old, the physical evidence has been pouring in since the late 1800s with the discovery of Homo neanderthal and the hidden discovery of Homo erectus. Dart's discovery of Homo africanus was just the floodgates opening to a revelation that Darwin had already described decades before. Today, we have a more complete picture of how we evolved from discoveries found in Africa, Asia, and parts of Europe. The most recent discovery, published in Science Magazine in 2015, pushed our genus's origins back to 2.8 million years. An upper jawbone was found in eastern Africa, less than 15 miles away from when Lucy was found. Though the origins of humans may still be debated, one fact every biologist can agree on, human evolution proves itself with every new discovery. At many points in time, science presents ideas that conflict with ingrained traditions, some of these ideas conflict with notions of our collective self, and many attack the people who the idea belongs to. Human evolution is one such idea that has seen so much resistance from religions around the world even to this day. Creationists, as they're called, claim that many of the new fossils are apes, not human ancestors. However, when shown some fossils compared to modern human skeletons, they cannot tell the difference. In modern times, much of the world believes evolution explains our origin and views religious resistance as a fruitless, dated belief. Though religious resistance may never fade, we can rest assured that the world will view evolution as the answer to our origins. Our genetic heritage, changes in the proteins produced by genes. The human and chimp genomes have been sequenced and it was found that there is only a 1.5% difference in protein sequences between the species. And according to genome, dot cshlp dot org the total difference between the genomes is four percent however that one point five percent difference in proteins account for a completely different gene expression in the two species we also found that more than eighty percent of the proteins we share with chimps differ in at least one amino acid presence absence of genes we have fourteen hundred genes that are not present in chimps in any form number of genes differ the number of genes also differ. For example, chimps only have one gene of the enzyme amylase, whereas humans have an average of six. When comparing the human genome to our closest genetic ancestor, the chimpanzee, we see that the genomes are nearly the same in length. However, in both genomes, many pseudogenes, sequences that no longer code for proteins, can be found. These genes are viewed by some scientists as remnants of neutral mutations that have accumulated, inflating the size of our genomes to the size we see today. The sticky question of race. Race simply means subpopulations are geographically separated and are genetically slightly different. Therefore, humans do have races. 
Genetic variation between races is only 10 to 15 percent, whereas genetic variation between individuals of the same race is 85 to 90 percent. These differences between races can be due to natural selection or sexual selection. What about now? Certain diseases and conditions, such as malaria and lactose intolerance, are examples of how we are still evolving as a species because they have been naturally selected for or selected against depending on the environment surrounding those groups. Other genes that were once useful to our ancestors now put us at a disadvantage or are no longer useful. For example, in the past, the consumption of fats and sugars kept our ancestors alive and warm, but now those foods are giving us diabetes and heart disease. Although it may seem that we are de-evolving because of the environmental factors such as technology that we have created and continue to create to facilitate our lives, rendering some of our genes obsolete. Research and studies have found that we are still evolving at a slow rate, but we certainly are still evolving. The Evolution Redox Evolution is not just a scientific theory. Evolution is a scientific fact, strongly supported by many areas like the fossil record, biogeography, the geographical distribution of plants and animals, embryology, the study of embryos and their development, vestigial structures, the genetically determined structures or attributes that have apparently lost most or all their ancestral functions in a given species but have been retained during the process of evolution, also a cause of evo devo, and the expression of genes, macroevolution, amongst many others. Still, many people require more than just evidence before accepting evolution. To these people, evolution raises such profound questions on purpose, morality, and the meaning of life that they just can't accept it no matter how much evidence they see. Why is it so hard to accept evolution as a fact? Nancy Piercing, an advocate of intelligent design, argues that the evils of evolution come from two world views that are part of science, naturalism and materialism. Naturalism is the view that the only way to understand our universe is through the scientific method. Materialism is the idea that the only reality is physical matter of the universe and that everything else, including thoughts, will, and emotions, come from physical laws acting on the matter. The Beasts Within A common belief about evolution is that if accepted that humans are only evolved mammals, there will be nothing to prevent us from acting like beasts. We would all live by the law of the jungle, and we would all be looking out for our own interest. This image comes from the evolutionist Richard Darkin's book titled The Selfish Gene, but the book says nothing of the kind. There is literature, like Darkin's book, that says that the selfish gene can lead to selfish behavior, but there is also scientific literature that says that evolution can favor genes that lead to cooperation, altruism, and even morality. Evolutionary psychologists try to explain what may be the cause of human behavior as an adapted result of natural selection. And it can be observed how all human societies share several widely recognized human universals. From the division of labor between the sexes, religion, dance, and body adornments, we can see an aspect of human nature. But we can't assume that all human behavior comes from adaptation. For example, art and literature may be the equivalent to a peacock's tail. But guessing how things might have evolved are not science. They are just stories. And at the end, these ideas are untested and probably untestable, leading just to speculation. But this doesn't mean that we are controlled by our genes and are considered unchangeable because all sorts of environmental factors can affect the expression of genes, allowing us to grow as individuals. As we have gone through this course, this group has been introduced and exposed to genetic, historical, and physical data that proves, without a doubt, that evolution is the process in which the diversity on Earth has radiated from a common ancestor. The discovery of Hox genes, fossils of past organisms that have traits we see in their descendants, and the trends we see in major phyla of the tree of life prove that every organism on the planet have come from a single bacterial lineage. Evolution is the answer to all diversity and variability in the organisms of Earth, past and present. We humans have not escaped these processes and will be affected by them until our disappearance. 
If you were to Google what will humans look like in 100 years, you will see humans different than they are today. Heads and eyes, for example, are predicted to be larger and human height will increase due to sexual selection. We are animals that will forever be exposed to changing environments and threats from other organisms, whether it is on this planet or on alien worlds. We, we believe, believe that evolution, evolution explains the diversity of life on Earth and humans will still be affected by it for years to come. come.